Well, there's not as much flying in this video because it's time for my annual condition inspection and five-year maintenance. back now from South Jersey Regional, had a great breakfast, and I'm trying to burn off the last of my fuel. I'm going to land at Sky Manor, and uh, that's probably it for my flying this spring. Next few weeks I'll be doing my annual, and uh, we'll be back up in the air during the great weather, hopefully, at the end of April. Part of the inspection is actually taking the plane apart, including the wings and of course offloading any remaining fuel from the fuel tank. Well this is my fifth anniversary doing my inspection and maintenance, so this year I have a lot of extra things I need to cover. I've ordered lots of replacement parts, pumps and hoses. I don't have any particular issues that I'm aware of that need to be dealt with, so most of these updates and replacements are strictly preventative. Well, the first thing I did was replace the electrically driven fuel pump, the facet pump, which is located below the baggage compartment. As you can see, it's a really tight fit, but I was able to remove the old one and successfully install the new one. Well, I moved along to check my carburetors. There are two floats in each of the bowls underneath the carbs and you need to check those to make sure that they haven't absorbed any fuel and become too heavy and not functional. I'll take them out and weigh them, but they look good to me. Well, the following weekend I performed a compression check with some assistance and everything looked fantastic. I also removed all of my spark plugs and just replaced them. As you can see, I removed the muffler and checked it over, everything looked good. A couple of the springs had some surface corrosion on them and I have replacements, so I replaced those. Removing the muffler allows me to see much more underneath the engine and in a couple of spots there was some rubbing that was going on with the hoses, that's not good. Rotax, the engine manufacturer, recommends that at every five-year interval most if not all of the rubber components and hoses on the engine be replaced. Now cutting the hoses to fit is really not that difficult. The hard part is getting them off the engine and replacing them because of the tight fit and the difficulty in getting your hands or tools in the locations that are needed to attach the hardware. Well, during my annual, I usually replace my brake pads and I, I clean out my bearings and, and repack them with grease. But at the fifth year, they also ask you to remove or clean out all of the old brake fluid and re-bleed the brake system with the new hydraulic fluid. I always find bleeding brakes more of an art than a science and uh, I'm never really that satisfied that I get enough of the air bubbles out. And this time was the same, while it looks pretty good on the video, I'm not happy with them and I, I think I'll be bleeding the left side again just to make sure that all the softness is completely out of the system. Well there's a lot more to an inspection that I'm actually showing but I made a lot of progress on the interior and it was time to actually 
start putting the aircraft back together again. Well, in addition to the coolant hoses which I've replaced, I also need to replace the fuel hoses and I've ordered these lines from another manufacturer. They're Teflon so they should last me for the life of the aircraft. I'm also replacing the fuel pump that's on the engine itself and uh, again all the hardware is going to be brand new. And here I'm actually uh, installing the new fuel pump. Every hose and every piece of hardware that's attached to the engine has a recommended torque number and of course I had to go around and double and triple check that all of my uh, fittings were properly attached. After applying some anti-seize compound it was time to reattach the muffler which as you can see is really not that easy of a job when you're doing it by yourself. Well now it's time to replace the coolant and also to start checking for leaks. Well, the new fuel pump looks like it's not leaking. Okay, this is the test of the ELT that I have to do every three months. The handheld radio has been set at 121.5. The power on the aircraft has been turned off. There's a test button here on the panel, and it's the emergency button and then the test. So I'm going to hit the test button once. And I'm waiting for another beep. And there it is. So that tells me my ELT is functioning properly, and it passed the test. Well, after I replaced some panels on the underside of the aircraft, I jacked up the nose of the plane to remove the nose wheel. Uh, during my inspection, I noticed that one of the bearings in the nose wheel was failing, and so I had ordered replacements, and they've arrived. And uh, the tough part is, in order to replace the bearings on these nose wheels, you need to replace the wheel right from the, the hub itself, and that's just a kind of a tedious process, but I was able to get that done. Well, it was finally time to test run the engine to make sure that all the hoses and pumps that I've installed are working properly and there's no leaks. One of the joys of operating a Rotax engine that's carbureted is balancing the carbs every 30 to 50 hours and after working on the engine this time, I set up my gauges and began running the engine, then stopping the engine, making some adjustments on the carb settings, and then running the engine again. Well, it looks like I might be ready for a flight test. 
I uh, went out and seasoned my brake pads to make sure that they were optimized and I went over the engine another time, checked everything in the aircraft to make sure I had reinstalled all the panels and, and the like and it looks like I'm actually ready to test fly her. And this should be the end of my annual, and my test flight is just about to occur. Everything is A-OK -okay right at the moment, so well, let's see how she goes. Skymanner traffic, lights for taking active 2-5, Skymanner.